Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. This is our uh, Twitch recap from uh, last Sunday's live stream over on the uh, Twitch channel, uh, where the uh, very first thing we are going to attend to today was the launch of the uh, emergency resupply pod that is uh, bound for Mars that will uh, hopefully at least give our crew that has already en route at least uh, some fuel to work with, although they uh, will absolutely need uh, at least another... Um, well, we can do it with, with one resupply pod if we can get one of the bigger ones out, provided that uh, Earth and Mars are at a uh, decent relative inclination with one another at the time of launch, or maybe another two of these, uh, provided we can get them there. Of course, these are lighter, smaller, and cheaper than uh, the ones we had intended to send to Mars, but they are still... Uh, I don't know. These are relatively easy to get there, but we need to send three of these, or we can send two of the ones that just failed because the inclination with Mars is such that they lacked the Delta V to actually get there, or if uh, we happen into a very, very good transfer window, we could send just one... Uh, maybe two of the big Lima resupply pods that we have uh, destined for Venus. Uh, maybe our next window. Uh, more on that in the next episode. Anyway, this is our uh, DN5. Yes, because we had to repurpose something that was bound for the moon to make this thing happen. This is our DN5 on its launch trajectory with our emergency resupply pod. And uh, so far, the launch has gone uh, extraordinarily well. I think I actually pitched down a little too much first and then ignored it for a while so I can gauge with chat and then uh, pitch down a whole lot to make up for it. There's booster set. They are down and away. And uh, fairing set to reveal the uh, little cupcake itself full of... Uh, kerosene and liquid oxygen. We will uh, deploy our solar panels and open up our comms, as well as uh, just making sure that the fuel is locked. Of course, we have uh, reserve fuel there in the tank uh, just in front of the heat shield that also acts as ballast so that we can keep the uh, center of mass as close to the heat shield as possible uh, during our aero capture maneuver. Uh, which is fantastic because we don't have to bring up the fuel it's going to take to break into orbit, unlike uh, many of the other things that we have been launching recently. So uh, now we're just going to uh, run through our core stage until we can get uh, somewhat close to orbit. Uh, I could be wrong here because it's been a couple of days, but I think we had to do just a small touch-up from our uh, B upper stage to uh, circularize, probably due to my absolutely abhorrent ascent profile. But uh, what else is new? <laughs> it's kind of my bad piloting has become kind of the pseudo standard of this, whereas I actually used to be pretty good at these things. Um, yeah, I just I don't know what happened there. Maybe it's the fact that I was doing it live, and uh, that is always way more difficult. Streaming is hard. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's really hard to play a game that takes concentration and actually talk to people at the same time. Just <laughs> not an excuse, but it's uh, my excuse. <laughs> anyway, we are uh, just uh, letting that angle drift up a little bit as we uh, try to circularize our orbit here in the uh, last couple of seconds before our uh, main engine cutoff. Which, yeah, it does look like uh, there's stage step, and there's ignition of the HG3 on the B upper stage. And a little bit of angle up, and there's our camera change. We'll pitch back down, and then pitch back up. And then, uh, yeah, oh, 961 by 142. Particularly terrible orbit, but uh, an orbit nonetheless. We are not going to fall back to Earth and uh, burn up in a uh, fiery inferno. So uh, now it's time to get our uh, Mars transfer plotted. We are a little on the tail end of the outside of this window. Uh, so this is unfortunately our last package destined for Mars this window, uh, which means of course that the uh, uh, cupola module that is going to Harmonia Station will have to wait until next window to be deployed. Uh, because we had so much trouble with these uh, stupid resupply pods 
that uh, it kind of absorbed all of our launch window time. Since we only do have two launch sites, it became a little difficult to uh, squeeze everything in. Um, if we can secure the funding by completing many of the contracts that we have outstanding, we'll probably look into building a third launch pad so that we can avoid situations like this in the future, because it looks like our windows, especially for Venus and Mars, are going to be very crowded uh, for the next decade or so. So the, uh, you know, the two million or so, two million or so that it would take to uh, bring a pad up to uh, maximum tech level, it's probably well worth the expenditure. It's just a question of whether or not we will actually have the money to expend. Anyway, uh, our node has been set thanks to MechJeb, the uh, HG3 getting its second light of the day, and uh, that is going to uh, push us hopefully almost all the way to Mars. It does have the Delta V to uh, get us there because uh, this resupply pod is uh, absolutely tiny compared to the other ones that we've launched, which is... Well, I mean, this is actually the biggest resupply pod that we could uh, task to purpose for the launcher that we had already built because uh, this was repurposed from a lunar resupply pod, thus the DN5, uh, and based on what we knew about the uh, transfer window, this was uh, as much as we could wedge in there, unfortunately, which is not nearly enough to get the crew home, but uh, I think we have enough life support on board at Harmonia Station to possibly get them through to the next window. Uh, well, I'm not going to say if not, because if not, they're dead. Um, we might have to figure something out, though. <laughs> Because this is what it is, and it's just um, the way that it goes. This is probably my worst planned and executed uh, Mars window ever. Uh, I should have plotted out the node from something in orbit so that I had a general idea of uh, what kind of DV figures we were looking at. But uh, we're coming up on the end of the burn, and uh, there is our current telemetry since... Uh, of course, nodes are forever inaccurate as hell. Uh, we're going to try to just uh, lay on the thrusters and uh, hope for the best. I think we'll, we'll unlock those two tanks and uh, fill them from our reserve fuel port uh, up in the heat shield just so that we can try to round down this node just a little bit. It's uh, kind of mission critical that it come in at least very close to Harmonia Station's uh, in orbit already, although this is taking uh, a very, very long time. So um, we do have a few ignitions left on the HG3 upper stage, and it would be really, really nice to have one of those ignitions remaining so we can burn through the rest of that uh, HG3 uh, when we get to Mars. That's another 500 meters per second or so, or 480 meters per second that we don't have to rely on. Uh, through aero capture, so uh, we're just going to tinker with this node just a little bit and uh, try to get in something where our periapsis is uh, on the descending node. Um, not much else matters, but we'll get something that is uh, generally considered close enough. Uh, we'll also unlock the very powerful thrusters that we have on the resupply pod itself. Uh, they will definitely help out as far as uh, making this tiny little correction a thing. Uh, unfortunately, we have lost uh, radio for, you know, reasons. Uh, I have exactly two geosynchronous satellites in orbit. One is in a polar orbit. One uh, sits out over the Atlantic uh, to aid during launches, uh, not so much during uh interplanetary transfers. So uh, we'll use some physics warp now that we have regained connection and uh, just lay on the thrusters until we can get this uh, telemetry in there somewhere, although it is uh, really, really fighting me. Uh, getting it close into the two Mars is uh, definitely a worthwhile endeavor, although ever letting off of a key, it tends to uh, rebound in a completely different direction. And uh, of course, we've lost the thrusters on the HG3 stage. They have been spent. We can refuel them, but uh, I think we've got a close enough. So we will set an alarm after setting a dummy node here after 
uh, Mars SOI changeover point and uh, check in on this again later. So at least that one is actually going to Mars. And, uh, well, I mean, that's the first one of all of them that's actually going to Mars. So jumping back into the VAB, we can now start talking about future planning. And this has uh, mostly to do with uh, the moon and what we're going to do with uh, Tremonia Station as uh, it experienced a rapid unplanned disassembly during uh, the week's prior live stream. So, you know, that's a thing. <laughs> so anyway, uh, the plan for the moon. The very first step is we need to bring a crew out to the uh, debris field that is Tremonia Station. Uh, I would like to salvage the Skylab module, and I would like to salvage the big honking fuel tank that we have sitting out there. Uh, I would also like to bring these things into a prograde orbit, if at all possible. So, we're going to load up a good, old, faithful, trusty Artemis IV. Now, this is the Artemis IV L3. Uh, this was our lunar lander variant. Of course, we used the moon as a proving ground for the Artemis system, as we have with uh, all prior Artemis systems. But uh, this vessel, or rather one just like it, uh, successfully brought a crew to Mars and back. And so uh, we know it definitely has the Delta V. It's just a little out of date as far as our current building standards, which includes uh, connected living space compliance which means this uh, fuel tank that sits at the head of the uh, Mark III capsule needs to be changed out for a crew tube to allow the crew to pass through the hatch at the front into whatever the hell it is that they're docked to. Uh, in this case, it's going to be Skylab, but in all future iterations, it's uh, probably something else. So uh, we'll switch that fuel tank out for a crew tube, which means we do need to add some life support and some fuel someplace else. Uh, a little bit later on, but uh, that is not today's concern. Anyway, the plan. The plan is that we are going to take this Artemis uh, out to the moon. We are going to rendezvous with the Skylab module. Now, there is a tank that is currently empty uh, attached to the bottom of Skylab. We are going to remove that tank, and we are going to place in its stead a docking port. Uh, this will make the Skylab module CLS compliant because the uh, radially mounted docking ports uh, are not connected living space compliant. Uh, we will then rendezvous the big honking fuel reserve tank that we have in uh, lunar orbit with the Skylab module and uh, dock the two together. So then it will be Artemis, Skylab, fuel tank all docked together. Um, at this point, depending on our fuel loadout and uh, the need for the crew to be there. Uh, the crew will probably move over to the uh, Lunar Uber 2, and uh, as an entire unit, they will switch orbit to a uh, more prograde vector. The uh, fuel tank, which still has the big lunar tug attached to it, it never actually undocked because we didn't have a big use for it, will then uh, proceed to boost its orbit and then uh, switch that into a prograde path. Uh, we are still debating at what inclination we would like this to be. Um, it has to at least be able to pass over Rosalina Memorial Station on the surface of the moon, but uh, in points further south would definitely benefit our uh, ability to collect more science in the future, which is uh, definitely a worthwhile endeavor, seeing as how we've kind of cleaned out the biomes that are close enough to uh, Rosalina Memorial Station to uh, actually get anything from. So um, in the process of uh, updating Artemis here, we will switch out two of these panels for non-jettisonable structural panels, uh, just to make sure that I accidentally don't jettison them and uh, kill everyone by separating the crew cabin from its only means of propulsion and uh, we'll just for the time being put this dress fairing back on and add it to the build list so that the crews can uh, start manufacture the rocket of course we do have a, a whole ton of spare parts for that thing so it's only about uh, 70 days to build from the bottom up now i do also want to make uh, kind of a midpoint hub um something that we can dock to and maybe gives us a chance to update our docking standards as far as this is concerned and while i mean we've got like 
almost 30 tons of uh, spare bulk that we can use up. This is usually tied up by the either the Lunar Lander or the Habitat module uh, on the old Artemis craft. And so uh, why not make an intermediary hub? This we can dock to the bottom of Skylab after a new docking port has been installed where that tank is going to go now and uh, kind of act as a, a small docking hub an almost inaccessible one considering the mass of uh, the Skylab module itself. But uh, we need to determine a few different things, namely what docking ports we have available and when new ones will become available. Because um, currently we have the uh, APAS 9598 as our standard, the common berking mechanism, and the NASA docking system will not be unlocked at minimum for two years. It looks like... Um, the CBM will come in about a year, and the uh, NASA docking system will come about a year after that, which is quite unfortunate because uh, they are extraordinarily light and uh, ex a lot easier to dock to because they have a larger footprint, and uh, these sorts of things matter with targeting and whatnot. So we will find the nodes that those are in, and we will uh, boost them up. Uh, to next on the build list before we uh, jump back into the VAB and start to complete our process here. Now uh, we will be putting an Apollo docking port on the bottom because uh, that is the docking port that is uh, on our primary fuel tank doohickey thing. Or rather, we can actually swap that docking port out relatively easy uh, as long as we have a spare which uh, we will undoubtedly be bringing with us. So since we're going with a larger docking port standard, uh, we can go with a larger hub that only costs uh, a whole lot to unlock. So we will uh, include a new replacement docking port uh, in our storage container itself and a lot of explosives for um, reasons, as well as some struts so that we can get the whole thing prepped for its uh, change from... Uh, retrograde to prograde lunar orbit. Uh, make sure our fuel tanks are still containing the uh, proper amount of fuel. We might as well size them up since we've got uh, plenty of room to spare. We are still actually under our tonnage limit, which is uh, pretty awesome. Although we do have to swap this top docking port for an Apollo port so that we can uh, dock it with the Skylab module since the uh, port contained within is Apollo standard and so is pretty much everything else on Tremonia. Now, we're also going to bring up two uh, water recyclers because, you know, hey, why not start to uh, learn how some of these TAC life support recyclers actually work before we will add this thing to our sub-assemblies menu and uh, get ready to add it to the Artemis 4L4, I guess it is at this point, uh, already being built. And, uh, you know... We will leave the VAB, and of course, Kerbal Space Program will crash. So, a very quick loading screen later, and uh, we are back into our save file, back at the Space Center, and then pulling up our Artemis from the build list, where we can go ahead and jump into sub-assemblies, find the thing that I already forgot what it was called, and uh, add it into our cargo container here uh, beneath Artemis herself. And now uh, this does add a significant portion of uh, time to our uh, build time, but uh, I can fix these tanks that I didn't clip in like I wanted to, hit save, and then jump back out to the Space Center. And uh, that was just about all we had time for. We did add some Shuriken Mark 6 Ks to the build list that'll probably be going out next episode uh, to get our crew from Kawaii Protato Station. But that's going to do it for this episode, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. I really do appreciate it. And I will see all of you in the next one. So until then, see you later.